G'day and welcome to Aussie Vision and we're doing our predictions of how we think Eurovision 2020 would have gone, who would have won, who would have flopped. We will never know but we're going to have a crack at it anyway and rather than start with the winner we're actually going to start with who we think could have done, who could have won with the jury and who could have won with the tally vote. And I'm going to start, because I think it's a tough one, so I'm not going to answer. I'm going to start with Liv. <laughs> who are your, who are your jury and tele vote winners? Uh, well, I put in between, side between the two S's. So I, I was on either the Sweden or Switzerland kind of vibe. They just fit the criteria of jury songs. And I think Sweden's just too consistent. I can't see jury members having it. Like, especially with the new um, jury system where it's weighted towards um, sort of consistent voting and stuff, other than mm. the outliers making so much of a difference. I just think Sweden would be so solid that they'd have to be up in the top three. And then with Switzerland, I think they would have had some kind of amazing stage show. His vocal is absolutely stand out, and I think it would have really caught their attention. So I would say the two S's. For jury. What about you on the jury, Kyriakos? Uh, I also had to. I had uh, Sweden or Malta. I really think Destiny would have impressed us. Uh, powerful vocals and yeah, obviously really disappointed we don't get to see that. And I really think she would have, yeah, gotten to the top there. I think Malta was a very good chance of being one of those surprise jury winners. I did have it down as one of my couple. Um, I guess trying to decide. Because <laughs> I also had a bit of an outlier with a Romania and maybe surprising. I think Romania has more jury appeal than Bulgaria, actually. And it could have been this weird surprise. But I probably think Malta, though, I do like where that kind of going with, with Sweden. Switzerland, I'm not so sure about, but we'll talk about that one later. That's interesting. Interesting indeed. Um, but also, like, Malta had to nail that, that vocal. She missed that vocal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Contemporary song, good vocal. Yeah, consistently was going to be good. All right, televote, um, Liv. Yeah, Russia. Like, I just think <laughs> they've got so much momentum with that song, and uh, they always lap up a decent televote, even with a half terrible song so you know i think they had a lot of momentum going into the contest what about you kiriathos yeah, totally agree russia hands down they're getting like five million youtube views on the usc channel every week reaching the 100 million views possibly going to beat netta so yeah I, I tend to agree they would have done a great uh, it would have looked like the video like it would have been great and they always do very well, particularly in the East on a public vote, regardless. But this also had such great Western appeal. So it just didn't matter. No, everyone would forget. I mean, Russia could do anything politically and people would still vote for this <laughs> yeah. because it is so good. So, yeah, I think it would have gone a very healthy um, public vote out of the kind of the quirky songs. I think it would have been the one. So out of those songs, I mean, let's go on to who would have taken out the whole title. Um, have we even mentioned who we think is going to win yet? Uh, Liv, who's going to win the contest? Or who would have? Um, look, I'm, I'm going to say that this is probably... I, I always pick an out there song and it doesn't win. I actually think Russia would have won. So. Wow. <laughs> I Look, it's not doing that badly in like the jury... Um, you know, poll things that have been coming up. It hasn't yeah. been completely tanked. And... I just think they would have had something going for them. And in, whenever they seem to relax a bit, that seems to be when they do better rather than when they're trying really hard. So I'm just like, but, I don't know. I feel like it was their year. Do you think they would have had, I know they haven't been doing too badly with the jury, but like how, like what's the worst jury performer who's actually won? Like Netta came third, hmm. Heroes came third. I don't think anyone below third has won the contest. That's only my concern about Russia, because I agree. I mean, True. they could swamp it, but the jury uh, become tenth. It's probably not good enough. Yeah, and then you end up having a uh, spirit in the sky situation. Mm. Maybe not as bad, but, you know, something along those lines. Okay, but I'm not, you know, it's a good point, though. I mean, they might have done really well, because the juries might have relaxed a little bit more this year and gone for the quirk. Kyriakos, would who would win? To, it would have to be very tight. <laughs> So yeah, I would have gone for uh, Iceland. Um, they wouldn't have won the, the jury vote. They wouldn't have won the, the telly vote. Oh. But the jury vote is the bit I'm not sure where they would have come. Um, but they seem to be a huge fan favourite, winning fan polls here, here and there, like all of them. Um, and Julius Miro always talked about uh, Eurovision win always hits the zeitgeist. And to me, pre-COVID, they hit the zeitgeist. Oh. But I think after COVID, I have to just throw something out there. 
Italy maybe would have won if mm. we still went ahead with Eurovision with COVID-19 happening. Because I've seen footage of the Adatto uh, singing in a Colosseum, an empty Colosseum, and it's just magical. Like, I wasn't a fan of the song, but watching the performance, it's, like, amazing. I'm glad you mentioned that because to me, <laughs> I actually really think this came was coming down to Iceland and Italy. Um, and I kind of thought that all the way through. And I think um, COVID, pre-COVID, whatever, I think it would have been the same thing because I think Diodato had um, a magic when he performed live. I think when you hear the studio, you don't get it as much. When you watch him perform live, and he, they didn't need to do a lot. Actually, a lot of the camera work, sweeping stuff, exactly what they did in that stadium of Verona. I mean, you can't have a stadium. But it would have worked really well, and they always could get a good televote score. Remember 2018, that horrendous song? I mean, I know you like it, Liv. They came third in the televote. This had appeal because there was a lot of quirky songs. This, to me, stood out as the one, while well, they're all competing for the quirk factor, this stands out on its, on its own, and it would have got a solid jury. Jury could be funny with Italian songs, though. That was my only concern. But Ison, I kind of agree with you the kind of second, second or second, third, maybe a Duncan situation takes out the win. They kind of had, it kind of felt like it was almost inevitable for them. Yeah. Wow. Um, awesome. Well, and I'm feeling convinced as I listen, to be honest. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I think what I love about this is we've had three or four songs mentioned. And so it is a case of we'll never know. People have said Iceland's going to win. And I just don't think you can ever, ever guarantee anything. Look at Italy 2017. Yeah, it feels hard for me with Iceland to know whether it's we're in the fan bubble and then mm. when you take it out to the public, whether it actually lands because there's always that song that the fandom is like breathing and then as soon as it is actually at Eurovision, it doesn't quite work the same. Because even that like that dorky, geeky thing, I mean, mm. it might not land with everyone and they weren't the slickest in the world. So yeah. I think they would have got it right. Okay, well, who else do you think would have made the top three that we haven't spoken about so far? Bulgaria, no. Okay, Bulgaria. I was, Solid I was concerned about their televote appeal and actually maybe, I mean, I personally love the song. Um, I just wonder, I just, yeah, I always, it, it certainly could have, I have no doubt, but I had a question mark about it. Mm. Kyriakos, any in the three that you, we haven't mentioned? Um, well, I did have maybe Hurricane with Serbia, like doing really well, maybe doing a Fuego, because it's one of the more upbeat songs um, out of the selection. Uh, possibly could surprise us. But yeah. Look, there's always a surprise. I had the kind of, I just took it out of my three, it was probably my fourth. I had Azerbaijan. Okay. I think it could have done the Fuego. I think there was a gap in the market for that type of, rather than the quirky fun, actually like a female banger comes in and just smashes it and does very well. Um, but I, I did end up just dropping it slightly outside because I had ice and Italy and Russia were my three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're kind of there with things. What about the top? If we look at the top 10, there's always a surprise top 10. We had Moldova in 2018 was a surprise. Even Australia in 2017. Who would have surprised us this year live? Who would have made the top 10? Um... Maybe not so much of a, of a surprise to the fandom, but maybe to an Australian televoter is something like Ukraine. Um, it, oh. I think it had a lot of very solid aspects and it certainly fills a, a cultural hole that we had in the contest. And uh, generally Ukraine, when they could go like full Ukraine, get a little bit of support. So um, I think it could have done quite well, but isn't probably something that Aussies would watch and enjoy. <laughs> It was definitely going to be a really interesting one to see how that went, like hit or miss. It could have gone either way. Kyriakos, what about you? Yeah, this is a tough one. I kind of feel like the UK may make a top 10. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's wishful thinking, but I really think maybe the song will um, yeah, translate to audiences a lot more better than the previous entries. So, yeah. Okay, I mean, that would have been a surprise. Um, I've actually put down um, Denmark. I think mm -hmm. they could have been a surprise. I think the juries often go, this, I could hear this song on radio. Maybe not the most contemporary, but like it's in, it's, it would have been solid with both. And I think it actually could have come across quite well live. And I think the public could have actually gone for it without it being massive on either. Um, it still would have been a surprise to me. I wouldn't necessarily have it in there, but I think it was, I think it was a chance. I mean, I did say Azerbaijan, but I don't think that's necessarily a surprise either because I already kind of said the top three. Yeah. But I think Denmark was, could have been sneaky there. Leonora almost made it last year. 
Yeah. And that was yeah. woeful. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine finishing 10th in your semi and 12th in the final. That's just incredible. <laughs> And that's it, because some of those songs can stand out in a grand final. Like it's a, mm -hmm. it's fun, it's simple. They can put, they perform to well to that empty stadium. Strange. Yeah, things. I think it had a lot going for it that song, and I hate to say that. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised for it to come twenty first either. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, okay, what about the flops? What fan favorite songs would have flopped? And your def definition of flopping, Liv. Um, yeah, it's very, rel very relative, isn't it? Um, mm. Well, flop in a sense that it wouldn't have been in the top three, Switzerland. I think there's mm. pretty high hopes for it, you know, potentially even being a winner um, in the fandom. So, I, look, I see it finishing about fifth. Uh, so I would say that that's a relative fan flop, but a good result if it happened. Oh, yeah, true. Totally. Uh, Kyriakos? I kind of have two here. Um, Bulgaria? Um, it's a big fan favourite, but I think might just might have missed the top 10. Um, and also Norway isn't doing as well in some fan polls and, um, yeah, might even not have made the top 10. You've mentioned ones I've got there too. I've got, I, I put Bulgaria too because I've got a big question mark. Could have done very well. Could have just, just not grabbed. Remember Bones? Like done very well. Finished fourteenth or something. This is better, I think, in lots of ways. But I just don't know if it it it, it still felt a bit manufactured. And I think maybe that miss on both Jury and and um, Telly Switzerland. I've got as a flop, and I've actually got as quite a big flop. <laughs> I think this is definitely the fan. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I really enjoy it. When we see that that video is remarkable, and I think my concern is that when you're looking at juries in these. Um, fan contest, particularly Euro Jury, who get a very good jury. I think Euro Jury is probably the closest. And I think it came eighth or something in that jury with that very slick, very slick um, video. And my concern is, I like his live vocals are really good but interesting. And I don't think they like. I find his really when he hits really high stuff, I find it quite grating. And I do not think it replicates that video. And I don't think the public would have come for that at all. And I would have said that would have missed the ten. I don't think Switzerland would have even made the ten. Um, or would have been low down. So that's my call on that one. I agree on Norway as well. I think that was, um, I think that was like a 16th. Yeah. And I think Lithuania as well might not have done as well. I was going to say, can we chuck Lithuania in there? Yeah, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Why live? I mean, look, when, when, the, when we were starting at the national final season, great. You had something quirky going for you. It just got slated by everything else coming through. And I'm just like, by like, this isn't the greatest anymore. Like, it, it never was the greatest. It's a bit too simple. Yeah, the oxygen is better. Simple yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. I felt like it was probably the out of the three quirks, Iceland, Russia and Lithuania, lowest on the tally vote, maybe second in the jury or round where Russia was. So it was just dropping. And I think it could have possibly been outside of 10 as well, or very low down there. I don't think it was a winning chance whatsoever. All right. What about Australia? How would have Australia gone? Let's start with you, Kyriakos. How would have Australia gone? I think Australia would have been the dark horse. And again, it would have come to staging. Australia always has to prove, we always have to prove ourselves at Eurovision every single year. And um, it would have depended on staging. And if staging was really good, I would have easily have seen a top 10. Okay. And Liv? Um, yeah, in, in the final. Um, and probably mid-table, mid 10th, 16th, something like that. I think this song had a ceiling. Like, I think... Done well, I think. The fact that seeing those Yuri juries and 15th, 16th at the moment, looking at that national final performance, which is divisive and the vocal wasn't that strong, with a good vocal, a better staging, I think this could have had a very good jury score with, I think it's one of the most contemporary songs in the competition. Um, I think that song element of it is being forgotten a lot because everyone's obsessed with the clown thing. A bit like last year with Kate and the Dress. Yeah. But it didn't have maybe the tally vote appeal. I think it was in that the Malta vein of songs. You know, Malta and Australia do this all the time. Well-produced pop that maybe just doesn't grab the public. So I think the ceiling would have been lower top 10, 8th, ninth area, and maybe down to your 14th. I think that was our area. But, you know, if it didn't come together, making the final still would have been a success, I think, as long as we don't lose that non-qualification. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we kind of agree. That's interesting. We kind of agree. Um, all right, talking about towards the bottom, who... <laughs> 
who would have been down there? Who would have either qualified and done badly or do we have a top five, a big five or host in there? Uh, Liv, let's start with you. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's been beat, beaten to a pulp by now, but uh, France uh, just, I mean, they would have to throw the absolute kitchen sink at it and have it work to not be in the bottom five, surely. Like, surely. And then... <laughs> I don't know. Is it just, can you resuscitate it by this point? I don't know. And then I think Ireland had like a shout and maybe making it to the final and then mm. coming like 25th. So yeah. I'll just chuck them in there. <laughs> I, I think they're, they're pretty good calls. Kyriakos. Yeah, I'll put Spain in there too. If, mm. if Mickey last year, who had an energetic fun song and just made it the bottom five, uh, yeah, could only make the bottom five. Um, I don't know how uh, Blast would have done with Universal. I feel it is that kind of, there's a couple of those big five songs that are quite just mid range. Um, Spain, definitely. I just don't see where huge votes were coming from. I think it was everyone's 15th, maybe. And that's the worst. I don't think it's the worst song, but I think it might have got the worst result. Also, I think maybe Austria would have, I think Austria would have qualified. And then if Germany had done a very good job, it just would have been killed by others. And I think it would have been down there as well. I'm also going to chuck, and I hate to say this, UK. Um, I think it's a good song, but it's, again, everyone's 15th, and I think they would have struggled with the same presentation um, mm. issues of last year. Um, well, I think France actually could have been one for the locals um, with the revamp. I think it was a lot better. So I think it could have got something, while I just saw no appeal for your Spains and, and your UKs. I just, didn't, I just didn't see any appeal for them. Yeah, and um, I am going to ho- chuck in the host nation in there too just because you do seem to struggle to get televote appeal when you're hosting. It's like you've had your moment eh, and mm. I'm not going to vote for you. And, it, look, it has some jury appeal, but I feel like there's just a lot of songs that have a hell of a lot more jury appeal and I could mm. see it just slipping away in both pockets and ending up towards the bottom. I did have a question mark about that. I was like, oh, I just think it would have got jury but he would have had to do an amazing performance to get that jury love. And if he didn't, I totally agree. He could have easily mm-hmm. done that, those bottom few points. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I think we haven't made up our mind on anything. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we never will, but it's, it's interesting. It, I think it was a little bit more open this year than people were thinking. I think Iceland deservedly were the hot favorite, but there was definitely scenarios that could have seen them not take out a title. Well, mm. ha- all right. Well, happy Eurovision, guys. Thanks for your insights. Um, and have a good Eurovision evening. And we'll see you later. See you. Bye. See you.